do you listen to a lot of acapella music on your own or do you listen to not acapella music when you're because like so for example like me being a musician i listen to so much music at work that outside of work like i'm, I'm listening to like finance i like listen to something totally not music related you know i'm curious your perspective on that yeah um well i mean i think there are two parts to that there's one like acapella versus non-acapella and for that i definitely listen to more non-acapella music okay um i think you know most of acapella is derivative you know it's it's mm. cover songs for the most part um and it's kind of doing versions of these original music you know there is a lot of amazing original acapella too mm -hmm. uh, but cover wise there are just i i try to take inspiration more from the non-acapella world <laughs> and sure. just the general music world because there's just more diversity of everything how do you write how do you write acapella because like like you said it's it's a lot of it comes from you know previously written stuff so you know you're t covering a taylor swift song you, well the, the chord progression is already there for you four five six you know or whatever you know like it's already there the bass line is there for you covering beat it by Mac michael jackson that bass line's already there you know like how do you, where do you start you know if you're starting from an acapella uh, original you know yeah i think there are a lot of different ways to do it um and with pentatonix they've kind of been figuring this out over the years um and for their first original album, it was a lot of trying to kind of create original music and also marrying the acapella element at the same time as they were mm -hmm. writing the songs. So they would be working with producer songwriters and kind of be like, oh, let's, you know, as they're writing the song, they're trying to incorporate all these vocal elements, um, which was cool. But I think a better way to do it is the way that we did it this time. Um, for, this, for the lucky ones? Yeah, okay. which is, um, Producers and songwriters got to flush out these fully produced non acapella versions of the songs. Wow, because cool. Because that's what they're used to. Yeah. Uh, and so instead of having to marry, instead of having to be like, okay, I'm doing my thing, writing a song, yeah. also trying to incorporate this acapella thing that I don't know a ton about, it was more like, I'm going to be in my, in my lane, um, you know, doing this songwriting, producing as I normally would with any other artist. Um, and so that was the, the first step of what happened. Yeah. And then after that, I would take it and adapt it to acapella. Dude, you guys should totally like, like B-sides and rarities release that as like- Yeah, 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 for That'd sure. That'd be so cool to hear, man. The, yeah. the behind totally. the scenes of- Totally, it's, it's been a really fun, this past album was super fun to work on because, you know, I basically got the session with the stems of everything. And I'm like, sick, okay, man. here's a super rad bass line. How can I make it sound good a cappella? Here's this cool guitar part. You know, it's not, it's also in figuring out what to include, what not to include. Sure. I'm not just going to replicate the entire production from top to bottom because it's, it's also just not necessary. When you're dealing with a cappella stuff, I feel like you don't need as many sounds happening at once because the human voice mm -hmm. is just so expressive. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't have to be quite as layered. Yeah. Uh, but it was it ended up being pretty layered and it was really fun